my name is Jamie McDougall, and I'm a psychologist who's been working with deaf people for over 40 years. My native language is ASL, as I was raised by deaf parents in Ottawa, Ontario. I'm also proud to say that like you, I am a senior. Today I'm here to give the second of a series of three presentations on the topic of mental health, wellness, and the deaf, and special focus on deaf seniors. The first presentation was focused on the lived experience of seniors in general, as well as the special aspects of being a deaf senior. I reviewed some of the ideas concerning aging in other societies with an emphasis on the term elder, meaning an older person that deserves respect for their lived experience and for their wisdom. I offered some ideas about mental health and wellness for deaf seniors. And I stress that I don't have any easy solutions to all of the problems and issues involved in mental health and wellness for deaf seniors. There's a lot that we don't understand about mental health in general and about feeling good or feeling bad or what we call wellness. We know that deaf seniors need special services that are communication rich and deaf friendly. And we know that it's important for deaf seniors to help each other. Another reality is that the early <coughs> trauma that many deaf people suffered in their early education, where they may have been deprived of language and communication, we know that the pain from that experience can stay with you all of your life. This is a reality for many deaf seniors, but we also know that life can be happy and full of joy most of the time. Getting old can present many challenges for physical as well as mental health. Mobility, fatigue, problems thinking, sometimes confusion, loss of memory, short-term, long-term, loss of a partner or a spouse or family and friends it can be very stressful as we get older. The loss of independence, having to move to a senior's residence can have its special challenges as well as great benefits. Financial problems, loneliness, <coughs> depression, many other emotions and feelings can be difficult to deal with at times. Again, I want to stress that most of the time I know that deaf seniors enjoy life fully. They're a joy to be around. But at times, deaf seniors, like hearing seniors, can suffer from serious mental health issues, even mental illnesses like depression, anxiety, mood disorders, eating disorders, personality disorders, and other mental health issues. I'm going to talk about this briefly today so you can be informed and gain some basic understanding of mental health issues and problems. One thing that is special in this context concerns the use of sign language, for example, ASL, to discuss mental health issues. ASL does not always have distinct signs for various mental health conditions. And some older signs may lead to confusion. Different people and different interpreters may use different signs for mental health terms like mind, brain, bipolar disorder, 
schizophrenia, and other such conditions. Some new signs might not be familiar to older deaf people. Signs for mental health and wellness are something we all need to recognize as an issue. And we need to work together on this issue. Another big issue concerns what we call diagnosis. This is the process where, based on assessment or examination, a professional offers a diagnosis concerning what condition you might have. For a physical illness, it could be a broken leg, high blood pressure, diabetes, or any other physical condition. Mental health diagnosis is more complicated and can be difficult to understand. Depression, for example, people often say, I am depressed, when they're just feeling bad. This is not a serious mental health condition. Clinical depression is serious and can only be diagnosed by a doctor or a psychologist. You should never try to diagnose yourself or others around you. This can lead to serious misunderstandings and can be very harmful to everyone. What I'm doing today is for general education. If you have any serious mental health concerns, you should always consult your frontline worker or an appropriate mental health professional for advice. Another important issue concerns stigma. Stigma means a negative misunderstanding about a mental health condition. Deaf people understand what stigma means when you think about how some people use the word deaf and dumb or deaf mute. These words express a serious stigma and a misunderstanding about deaf people, just like the words crazy express a serious misunderstanding about mental illness. It can hurt a person who is suffering a genuine, a genuine mental illness to be called crazy. So let's all be careful with the words we used and some of the signs from the past. Out of date words that often reinforce misunderstandings of mental health issues. Normally we don't blame people when they have a physical illness like the flu but we tend to blame people for their mental state. Remember, mental illness happens because of a physical change in the brain or a traumatic event that happens to a person. There are many complicated reasons for mental health problems. With these general cautions out of the way, I'd like to focus on some mental health issues that are of special concern to seniors, to all seniors, including deaf seniors. Dementia, Alzheimer's disease, these can be scary words to all people who are aging, as well as to younger sons and daughters and family who care for their aging parents or family members. It's a concern for frontline workers who serve deaf seniors as well. Dementia is a medical term. It's not a specific disease. It's an overall general term that describes a wide range of symptoms and conditions. It usually involves a decline in memory and thinking skills and a reduction in the ability to do everyday activities and to look after yourself. Alzheimer's disease accounts for about 
60 to 80 percent of all dementias. It is the most common type of dementia. Conditions that involve dementia are serious and they need to be diagnosed by a doctor or a psychologist. Self-diagnosis, again, is not a good idea. Some people can think they have dementia when they don't. And sometimes the reverse is true. They don't realize they do have a serious dementia condition. Dementia is not just ordinary memory loss as we age, and not even periodic confusion. Most seniors do not have dementia. Of course, we're all at risk of acquiring some aspect of dementia as we age, but it's important not to be overly stressed about this possibility. A little more about Alzheimer's disease. It was discovered by an, a man named Alwa Alzheimer, a German doctor at the turn of the century. Alzheimer's disease is a disorder of the brain. It's not contagious. Doctors and scientists do not understand dementia. Dementia involves memory problems, confusion in thinking, communication issues, behavioral issues, and can involve anxiety and depression. Different people in different stages of dementia can have very different symptoms. There are special issues involved for deaf people who are at risk for Alzheimer's disease. Since communication is involved, diagnosis by a professional who's aware of the special communication needs of deaf seniors can result in a misdiagnosis, either missing the disease when it's present or diagnose the disease when it's not present. Deaf seniors and those that work with deaf seniors, including sign language interpreters, need to have accessible information available to ensure the reduction of the misdiagnosis of the disease. This will require a dedicated effort to make materials available in sign language format. So what can we do? Some help is available. Sometimes medication can help. Therapy, diet, physical, mental, and social activity can help. Many things can be done, but unfortunately, Alzheimer's disease is a progressive disease, and there is still no cure. A positive attitude, a good supportive environment can go a long way. We also need more research, and research that includes deaf seniors and their families. One wonderful example is a deaf researcher from Manchester in England who is doing much needed research with deaf seniors who have Alzheimer's disease. As I mentioned earlier, most deaf seniors do not in fact have Alzheimer's disease but they can still have less serious mental health issues from time to time. There's a lot we can do to help, and right here at Rumble, we have an excellent communication-rich program that serves as a model to all of Canada. There's Respect for Seniors and Communication Plus. Lots of activities, and a vibrant social life. These are all things that we know improve the mental health and wellness for deaf seniors. 
Unfortunately, deaf people who live in smaller communities are often isolated and they don't have access to the type of services that we have here at BRCED. This is a priority for us all. We hope that new technologies that allow for communication over great distances can offer some solutions. In Alberta, a study was done concerning social isolation of deaf people in rural areas. And this study has a lot of useful information for us here in Ontario. I'll end up by reminding you of some of the tips for keeping well physically and mentally. <coughs> Always feel free to express your feelings and emotions to someone. Get your concerns out there. Don't be afraid. Don't let false stigma regarding mental health hold you back. Exercise regularly where possible. Eat well. Get enough sleep, which I know can be difficult as we get older. Spend time with loved ones and friends. Enjoy socializing with your friends. And of course, games are always fun. Don't be afraid to tell your doctor or frontline worker if you have a mental health concern. As mentioned, positive attitudes can go a long way. And helping others can be very rewarding. Many deaf seniors find joy in spiritual activities as well. All of these things and activities can contribute to your mental health and wellness. For the next presentation in this series, I will review basic information about professional approaches to mental health and wellness. For example, psychotherapy. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, Dialectical Behavior Therapy, Mindfulness, Narrative Therapy, Brief Solution Focused Therapy, and some other approaches that are used by professionals. Thank you very much for coming. It's nice to see you all again. If you have any questions or comment, I welcome that. Thank you.